Uh, good afternoon, Kia ora um, I'm Derek Sherwood, I'm Chair of the Council of Medical Colleges. It's just lovely following on from Deborah because um, what I'm talking about in a way is, is, is intimately involved in health literacy, so it's, uh, it's nice to follow on from her and I've got a few questions for her later on. Um, so who are the Council of Medical Colleges? Well, we represent um, 15 of the medical colleges, so um, ranging across all the specialties from general practice through to surgery you know, medicine and so forth. Um, so that's probably representing about 15,000 uh, vocationally trained doctors in New Zealand. Um, how did I come to be involved with this? I'm, I'm a, uh, trained in medicine in New Zealand and then did ophthalmology training, so I'm an eye doctor. Uh, I went to the UK for that, but then came back and worked in rural Northland. Um, and I guess that's where I suddenly discovered that we had a huge amount of inequity in the way we provided our health services and I guess that set me on this road which uh, has me involved in all sorts of things like this. Um, so uh, medical college's core activities are around postgraduate training, so training other specialists, um, continuing professional development and also I guess fostering professionalism. Um, and so this program Choosing Wisely was something that the council thought was a really good thing for us to be involved in implementing in New Zealand although it's actually a program that covers all health professionals. In fact, it's an incredibly wide program. Um, and you can see it as being quite a grassroots program led from um, by health professionals and by themselves and partnering with the community. Um, so, what is it about? Where's the thing? Hang on. Good. <laughs> so what's it about? So basically it is about trying to improve the quality of conversations between health professionals and consumers and patients. Um, it's trying to inform, give them better information uh, about the evidence around tests, treatments and procedures um, and really trying to empower them to question uh, whether this is the right test or the right procedure for them and trying to avoid them having tests that are either unnecessary where the, where the risks outweigh the benefits. Um, so it's a lot of it, this is really about inf um, shared decision making, so, uh, which we'll talk about a bit more in a minute. It's part of an international campaign. Um, it's originally developed in the US in uh, 2012 and then spread to Canada. This is a, a screenshot off their website. Um, and then it's, it's now spread to, I think there's 15 countries at last count that are in some way involved with setting up this program. Um, I'll get on to some of the details about the program uh, in a minute, but uh, it certainly links well with the New Zealand Health Strategy in, in that it's um, emphasising a team approach. Um, it's building on health literacy and trying to improve that um, conversation between health professionals and, and their consumers or patients. Um, and I'll talk a little bit in a minute, but a, a big part of the program is a consumer engagement um, sort of arm to it. Um, it's trying to improve performance and outcomes and, and the outcomes of care. And it's targeting where we spend money. It's not, as I'll talk about in a minute, it's not about saving money, it's just making sure the right people are getting the right tests but, and treatments, but obviously that means also that we can spend our fairly scarce resources uh, wisely. So the core principles, as I said, are that it's led by health uh, uh, professionals, but certainly with a patient focus. Um, it's evidence-based, and it's again, it's about quality of care, not, co not cost savings. Um, and we're, as I'll talk about in a minute, we're engaging all health professionals from the beginning of this program. In the US it started largely as a doctor's program and then spread out to other health professionals, but we're taking the approach that this should be uh, all of us involved from the beginning. Um, we talk, in, in Choosing Wisely, they talk quite a lot about low value care, um, not, not value in the monetary term, but in terms of the value of care to patients. And what we're really talking about there is care that gives little or no benefit to patients or where the risk of harm uh, exceeds the likely benefit. Um, so, you know, if you think about examples, and we'll have a few more in a minute, but, uh, you know, antibiotics for a, a viral upper respiratory tract infection is giving little or no benefit to patients. Um, you can think of a whole lot of examples of where risk of harm exceeds 
uh, benefit. Uh, so a, a more complex one might be using a screening test for someone at a low risk of that condition. So you're doing a PSA test on someone who's at low risk. You know, your chance of actually getting a false positive result that then leads to them having a whole lot of other investigations and treatments is quite high. Um, care where the costs do not provide proportional benefit. Um, and you know, the example there might be robotic surgery for prostate cancer. You know, there might be some infinitesimally small ad advantage, but the, um, the increased cost of the procedure really makes it um, uh, low value care. Or in my specialty of, of eye surgery, you know, someone's brilliantly come up with a way of using a laser to do a cataract operation, doubles the cost, and the outcomes appear to be exactly the same. So probably not worth the money. Um, what, the pro, what Choosing Wisely, uh, one half of Choosing Wisely is really health professional organisations talking with their membership, identifying these types of low value uh, interventions and then trying to work with their uh, membership to, to highlight that or try and get them to modify their behaviour. Um, so, so far we're fairly early on in New Zealand, we're really just getting going but we've already got 17 groups here who've started to look at the evidence around their practice and develop recommendations about tests and treatments that they sh their membership should be being more thoughtful about. Uh, so it's just a list of some examples here and, and as well as the ones I've mentioned, um, you know, you can see there are ones around uh, sedative tr um, prescribing, um, benzodiazepine prescribing for the elderly. Um, radiology ordering is a big one, you know, it's very easy and I've been guilty of this in my own practice, it's very easy with an anxious patient to think, oh what harm will it do just ordering that scan and often that just sets up a whole, uh, you know, several years worth of anxiety when it shows up a, uh, an incidental oma, you know, a, a, an odd finding that doesn't fit with the symptoms but you then have to go, go and investigate that and very rarely do those findings actually turn out to be um, anything significant. Um, so this is the, just a, snap sh a screenshot off the Choosing Wisely Canada website uh, and you can just see here this is the page with their lists on and there's just a whole lot of medical specialties down there which you can click on and look at their recommendations uh, for their particular speciality. I'll talk in a minute about the, um, uh, the consumer or the uh, public uh, parts of the, these websites. Um, so. In terms of this sort of approach around health professionals and lists, um, thinking about NGOs and and I know a lot of them will have, some will have health professionals working within them and some not, but I think the main thing is when this program gets going, we'd really like you to start looking at where it fits within your practice, within the area of care you're providing and perhaps uh, try and get health professionals that are working within your organisations to uh, to look at their own uh, professional bodies, see what they're coming up with in recommendations and see how they can use that in their own practice. There'll also be, as I'll mention later on, a lot of um, information posters and informations, uh, information for patients and consumers and so it'd be great to be able to use that also in, in the uh, areas where you're going to have your consumers and patients because um, these are about empowering patients to ask questions and challenge um, the types of tests and treatments they're, 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 uh, that are being um, that they're being encouraged to have. Um, so consumer involvement. Uh, so we've already consulted right from the beginning with um, uh, the HTC and the HQSC consumer groups. We've got consumers on our steering group. And the thing that I'm really pleased about is we're partnering with Consumer New Zealand uh, to actually uh, provide a lot of the consumer engagement part of Choosing Wisely in New Zealand. Um, um, so they're um, preparing resources for their website. They're at the moment surveying attitudes in the, uh, amongst their membership to uh, over investigation and over treatment. Um, and they'll be putting something out in their magazine. Um, so, and we'll obviously be having patient information on our website, which goes up in December, which I uh, I'll give you details of in a minute. Um, so, 
The, uh, the, I guess I'll just cut down to the bottom bit. The thing that's been a really key part of the message in other countries which seems to be very effective is really trying to encourage patients to ask simple questions of their health, health providers. So do I really need to have this test or treatment? What are the risks? Are there simpler, safer options? And what happens if I do nothing? Another qu question that we've been toying with having on there is what information can you give me to make me make it easier for me to make this decision? Um, the UK Choosing Wisely group are going to link all their recommendations to patient decision aids, um, and that's certainly an approach that um, I think we'd like to look at, um, but it certainly re it requires a lot of resources which we don't have yet. Um, so Choosing Wisely Australia, um, this is just a, a screenshot off their website. They started about a year ago, and a lot of the colleges that are members of our organisation are also uh, binational colleges, so a lot of our colleges are already involved with the Australian program, uh, which has kind of been helpful for us in a way, although some of the issues with over-investigation and over-treatment in Australia are a little bit different um, from New Zealand, so some of them are going to have to be modified a bit. Um, this is, uh, I guess, the way I like to look at this uh, and look, about, uh, look at shared decision making, which is that you know, whenever there's a discussion between a patient and a health professional, you've really got two experts in the room. You've got the clinician with, uh, or the health professional with their knowledge of di around diagnosis, the etiology of the disease, the prognosis, what are the treatment options, what do the studies say about the outcomes. Um, but then you've got the patient in the room who's really an expert uh, in their experience of their illness, their own social circumstances, their attitudes to risk and their own goals and values, uh, and also what support needs they have, which is often critical when it comes to choosing different types of treatment. And really what we want is these two experts coming together to make a decision that's right for that, that patient. So we've got, so far uh, we've been sort of getting this going over the last uh, 12 months, nine months, I guess, and uh, we've uh, had a lot of support from other um, uh, other people in the health sector. We've had a certain amount of funding, which is helping us kick off. I uh, would love a bit more, but we're <laughs> working on that. Um, and I think that you know one of the things that um, has been found overseas is that this, even though we're doing in a way. We're trying to achieve things that have been tried in different ways before through guidelines, evidence-based guidelines, uh, best practice kind of guidelines. Um, this is a little bit more of a grassroots movement. It seems to engender quite a lot of interest and enthusiasm from health professionals. Um, and so we're, we're already getting signs of that in New Zealand. A lot of people are interested in being involved. The other thing that's quite good about it is it's a pretty broad church. It's not there aren't any strict rules about this. The Choosing Wisely principles are pretty simple and we're very happy for anybody and any uh, health provider organisation or health consumer organisation to get involved. Um, we're going to launch um, our website on December the 7th. We're going to have an implementation workshop in April next year where we'll be having um, health providers who are already starting to run programs around Choosing Wisely, start to present their er early experience. Um, and in the meantime, until our website goes up, I really highly recommend having a look at the um, Australia, Canada and US um, Choosing Wisely websites. They've got a lot of resources and a lot of really in interesting information and a lot of interesting information for consumers, including videos and, and um, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that we'll probably struggle a little bit with our funding to be able to do. Um, I wanted to get through this reasonably quickly and give you a broad overview because I'm sure there'll be some questions. Um, one of the issues I think um, we have a little bit of concern about in New Zealand is we have areas where, where we actually have under provision of services and investigations. We want to be careful that this isn't used as an excuse to do less than we should be doing. So. Um, so I imagine some of you with the um, areas that you work in might have um, some concerns about that as well. Uh, but look forward to your questions later on. Thank you very much. <laughs>